fake Facebook man Posting lies about my life which no one else can Filters on my face to disguise my age So much money that I don't have is what is on my page Why don't you come and join my team It's called living the fake Facebook live dream They post a pic of me eating clean But it's pizza and burgers for dinner, you know what I mean A snapshot of vacations that I got no money to take Since you were one of my sports car, you know that it's a fake Got my love loaded up with things that aren't even true Pretending on Facebook is my thing, it's my thing too And friends, which I've never done met. A pic of my lunch is what you're gonna get. I heard a post of your baby say it's one darn cute kid, but I lied because it's ugly. That's called an online fib. I talk about success in my job and the pending promotion, but in reality, it's a psych because I got a demotion. Only the fake Facebook man. Which no one else can Future's on my face to disguise my age So much money that I don't have as well as on my page Why don't you come and join my team It's called living a fake Facebook live dream You block me on Facebook without a judge, jury, or trial I'll be creeping you the next day with a shiny new profile See a pic of my family? Yeah, we're having a good time Well, the joke's on you, we have not talked in eight months or nine I'll tell you about the weather and the stuff you don't need to know I'll fake a good illness so the sympathy will grow I'll ask you to donate to my made-up cause And post selfies on the daily that ain't breaking no laws So don't judge the life of the fake Facebook man Pretending to be happy like no one else can All right there, Kinsman. How you doing there, pal? Doing all right. It's a busy day today. We're uh, we're hanging out all over the place today. We're at, at uh, Hollinger Golf Course today, uh -huh. the next gen in town, which we have uh, tickets to give away, by the way, tonight for all the rounds. Whoever wants to go and watch these uh, amazing juniors play, just comment on tonight's show, and we'll announce a winner at the end of tonight's uh, episode. And uh, we also have uh, tickets to give away to uh, Imagine Cinema 6 and Farm to Fork box from the Mountjoy Farmers Market. So uh, lots of winning. All you have to do is comment. I'm really, I'm really impressed with you because, like I said before, you, you went a couple weeks, you gave people no prizes, and now you're overdoing it, giving away three prizes. Uh, I really think you're overcompensating for something, but good, good, good work there, Kinsman. And <laughs> Over, overcompensating for what? <laughs> I, I don't want to get into all your personal secrets yeah, on a live it, uh, stream. You can talk about that. TMI, right? right? So uh, yeah, we, yeah. we do tell all, but not yeah. all uh, on this show. You tell me a lot of things privately, and I, you know, I'm like, I don't know if I should tell people that on Facebook. Maybe if someone well, you know, sent me an EMT for twenty. It's like, it's like Vegas. Whatever happens behind the show scenes uh, stays behind the scenes, right? All right. So, so, so usually yeah. I, I I could talk with you for ten minutes be, before we bring our guest on, but I'm sorry, pal. Oh, no, we're not. No, not tonight. You, you know, you know who, who's going to be joining us, Stacy Mystician, and you know I'm a huge fan of Degrassi. You're a huge fan of Degrassi. Used um, to watch it uh, way back growing up. Again, uh, Caitlin, uh, Caitlin Ryan is uh, the character name, and yes, uh, you're a big fan. Uh, got a message before the show stating that you're going to be uh, so fanned out, uh, you're not going to be able to concentrate for the entire episode. <laughs> I, I love all our guests, but yeah, I'm super excited tonight. I like, you know... Thousands and thousands of Canadians grew up with Degrassi, and uh, we, we, yeah, we're, we're, we're really excited to have her on. So, yeah, it's very simple. You know, if you want to win a prize tonight, just comment. We'll draw three random names at the end of the show, and uh, 
I think it's time to bring Stacy on. Are you ready? Or Stacy on. She's waiting in the wings, and uh, yes, we don't yeah. let uh, we don't let stars wait too long. So let's bring her <laughs> on. Right. Let's, I'll let wait. You, let's see if I'll you can wait. concentrate. I, I I'm going to say my hellos first. I'm going to say that now because I probably won't be able to get a word in edgewise. All right. After I say let's hello, I should say on. hello and goodbye just to cover it all. <laughs> there she is. <laughs> hello, Stacy. How are you doing? I'm great. How are you guys? Great. Yes. We're, we're awesome. So, yes, everyone's been teasing me all week because, you know, I had uh, the VHS copy of Schools Out. And in 92, I probably watched that about 60, 70 times. I was <laughs> I was really, really into Degrassi. But like I'm 46. So like I felt like I grew up with the Degrassi kids. So it's I okay. grew up with the Degrassi as well. But uh, I don't think uh, like I. I I can say I was a fan. I, I love the show, love the content, but I think uh, the, the the biggest fan, Stacey's sitting right there on the top top <laughs> left of the screen, right. Mr. Claw. He has been talking. He's been talking nonstop. No, he's like, you know, who's on the show? Yeah, you know, this was like last week. You know what's called? who's on the show next Thursday? Who's on the show this uh, tonight and today? And it's <laughs> it's Stacey, and it's time. So uh, it's it, awesome. It's a pleasure yeah. to have you on the show, Stacey. We love uh, yes. we loved you uh, back when. Uh, you were on uh, the TV screen for thousands across, uh, you know, I'm going to say million. A lot of people have uh, tuned into the, the, the grassy series and here you are uh, right here. This is uh, still amazing. That's right. And a lot of people chiming in already. So yeah. the, the first question, you know, I, I'm, and, and people have asked, I'm sure you've been asked a lot of these questions millions of times because a lot of people, are, they just adore Degrassi, but why are folks so connected with the Caitlin Joey relationship? Mm. Because it's the unrequited love. It's the mm. on again, on, uh, on again, off again, realistic mm. romance. Um, if, if we had gotten together, I seriously don't think people would have cared as much. They just, it was that will they or won't they? They just, right. you know, it was a tease. It, it, was it was all the love triangles that uh, kind of kept everybody in. They're like, okay, they're going to get together. And all of a sudden, no, no, no. Okay. Joey just ruined it. Or uh, Caitlin's character ruined it. Uh, <laughs> right. and, and then, they, you know, there was always a cliffhanger at every episode. But, uh, yeah, you guys never really truly uh, got together because I'm sure, like you said, the writers would say, you know, okay, we, we need people to be tuned in. Let's uh, let's Let's keep them going. Yeah, it was like the moonlighting thing. Remember the two, you know, the characters. And, and of course, Joey and Caitlin were like opposites as well. So it was like that kind of opposites attract thing too, which I think was appealing. So do you bad boy, the good girl. Right. <laughs> do, do you feel though that like the Joey and Caitlin characters got proper closure? <sighs> well, no. Okay, no. honestly, no, of course not. But... Should they have, I guess is the bigger question. Um, yeah, I don't know. Fans obviously wish that they had got a lot of fans wish they had gotten together, yeah. but I think it was realistic how they ended it. Um, because that's so true in life. I and mean, when we don't always end up with our high school sweethearts, right? Um, <laughs> very rarely. It's Pat true. ended up with his high school sweetheart yeah. in real life, the Joey Jeremiah guy. <laughs> yeah he did he, he they've been together forever yeah yeah they're they're awesome i guess that makes sense because you know the the theme around degrassi and the reason why so many people are attracted to it because it's reality right you know i i, I was a fan of you know 90210 and saved by the bell and those other shows but they were always hollywood-ish and when you watch degrassi it's, it's been told a thousand times that these are stories that people can connect to and issues going on at the time and I, I, I heard a comment before where they said that a lot of the stories came from the actors' real life experiences. <laughs> Is there truth to that? Oh, for sure. I mean, they were around us, the writers were around us all the time. And um, yeah, a lot of what was going on in our lives carried over onto the show. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like there were spies on set, <laughs> but it, it wasn't as, uh, as nefarious as that. They were pretty open about asking if they could. I mean, my parents were going through a divorce, for example, mm -hmm. while I was on the show and they asked me, you know, if it was okay to do that storyline for Caitlin's parents when they were questioning their relationship. Um, a lot of things like that. And uh, it's partly, it's a large part of what made the show so relatable. Mm -hmm. 
And it's why it connected with uh, thousands of Canadians. And, and you know, another thing, you're just rewatching, just rewatched a lot the two seasons of Degrassi High. One thing I noticed because there's a theme in Hollywood right now, and it's definitely noticeable where the the women the women who are acting saying the roles for women aren't as dominant as the men's anymore. They're either there for their appearance or they're there to support the men. But I do not find that's the theme in Degrassi. I find that the the female characters led the show, had the most interesting storylines, were the dominant characters in, in most of the episodes. Was that true? Was that something with, that was ever discussed, or that's just how the show rolled out? That's just how the show rolled out, but th- it's a really good point. You know, no one's really ever brought that up before. Um, it probably helped that our producer was a strong woman. Um, there was... Uh, it was... Ve- it was. You're right, there were a lot of strong female characters on the show. Mm-hmm. I'm hoping things are starting to change uh, for the better now in in, in Hollywood and, mm-hmm. and on TV. But uh, yeah, I guess we were pretty uh, pretty ahead of the game that way too, which is which is nice. <laughs> well, ahead of the game, uh, you know, looking at uh, all the all the risque, like tiptoeing to the line and, you know, not quite stepping over that line, you know, uh, <laughs> character deaths, uh, you know, pregnancies, abortions, cancer storylines, uh, you name it, uh, you know, love triangles. Uh, this was the show, you know, taking people to the edge. And I think, uh, you know, it was the edginess that uh, kept people tuned in every single episode. And, sure. uh, you know, you, you guys and the producers, you know, were, were, were taking, you know, saying, you know, let's uh, let, let's see what we can do this week and next episode. And, you know, that, that, that was the fun of the whole uh, Degrassi series. Yeah, it was the show that had everything. <laughs> when, not the school you want to go to in real life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. And I mean, I, I guess if you're watching, you know, I, I always wanted to go there, but I, I just began <laughs> watching. When when School's Out comes out and, you know, that was watched by a couple hundred, three, I mean, 2.5, 3 million Canadians. I would have to think, you know, School's Out's over. And you know, I, I have watched that plenty of times. I'm thinking, okay, what's next? Like, people got to go to college. People got to start careers. The, I assume there was a discussion at one point saying, do we go to the next step with the you know characters we've been following for all these years? It seemed like it just ended. Yeah, it, it was a pretty abrupt ending. Mm-hmm. Um, they never really discussed it with us. Mm-hmm. I don't know that they had a plan uh what they had in the works and I don't know when they actually started uh planning it was the Degrassi talks because that was the next thing that uh that they did um so I'm I am curious to know when that came about like in their heads but yeah they never discussed a college or I mean we joke all the time about you know the geriatrics of Degrassi (laughs) how old are we going to be on the show but, um, yeah, no, that was, I think they wanted to quit while they were ahead, mm-hmm. to be honest. I think it was like, let's end it here, you know, let's not run it into the ground. Well, that's it. Uh, you you want to end it on a, a good note and not drag it on, where now you start reading, you know, headlines where people are online saying, you know what, they should have ended this years ago. Yeah, you know, yeah. you didn't want to have that scenario happen. Exactly. Yeah. I when I I just think because schools out was like a big a big smashing success. It definitely left people for more. And we'll get into it in a few moments. You know, the Degrassi cast is doing more, and there's still a way to interact with the Degrassi cast. And uh, that there's a whole bunch of awesome things going on. But I'm very curious. You know, when you're out in the public, um, do people expect you to be? Caitlin Ryan is that an expect I I'm sure like if you're out with your husband or your family people are, people say oh Joey's gonna get upset I'm sure there's <laughs> some, some stuff over the years you've heard they expect maybe they expect your Caitlin but you're Stacy but people expect that because they're attached correct I think now that I'm 50 <laughs> yeah, sure. people don't have those expectations no. anymore I hope not but certainly when I was younger mm-hmm. and I was still on the well even after the show I, and a lot of that was um, pressure I would put on myself, too. I would feel like people expected me to be a certain way, um, certainly for relationships. Um, I had guys that were attracted to me thinking that I was Caitlin, but they were getting the Caitlin Ryan. Right. <laughs> it's like, no, I'm not yeah. that girl. <laughs> right. um, well, so, it- yeah. 
it, it makes sense because you know if you follow the the Caitlyn character. She, you know, she's very serious. Uh, wants to be involved in serious issues. You know, Joey Joey calls her moody, but that's just that's just, <laughs> that's just a guy thing, right? Um, you know, if their girlfriend's going through serious issues, a guy just says moody. Um, but but in real life, you know, following you on Instagram and and, and, and all your videos, you, you seem the complete opposite. You like to joke around and have fun. So yeah, you're not. It's a character. You're not. You're not Caitlyn, and I'm sure when the show came out, a lot of people, you know, they watch the show or they have the poster, or they see the magazines, and they have one expectation. But that must be true for a lot of people in in, in movies and TV, especially when you've been playing the same part for so long, and it kind of it becomes like a persona. And yeah, people come to expect that. It's, I mean, it makes sense, but it is. Um, it took a while for me to kind of break free of that. I think after the show ended. When 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 they did the ten year reunion on uh, Next Generation, so the, uh, a lot of the old cast came back. It, it, it almost seemed like the Caitlyn and Joey characters had flipped. You know, Caitlyn's in, in sort of like a turmoil there. You know, she's got this uh, oddball uh, fiance from Hollywood. <laughs> Joey's a little more. He lost his wife, but he's a little more grounded. Was that something intentionally to sort of flip the characters, or just change the dynamic of it? Huh, another good question. Um, I think it, it was fun to do it that way. I think they really wanted to show that um, Joey's character was not the same crazy, like he'd matured a lot over the years. I mean, he's a stepdad, um, you know, he's, he's got a job, he's, he's got to look after a family now. So I think they definitely did a good job at, um, giving him that, that, um, that persona and that whole, um, what's the word I'm looking for? I think it was a good call on their part to, to have him be the more grounded one. It was a nice kind of switcheroo for yeah. a bit. Yeah, it was. It, it was like a, a, yeah, a refreshing thing. You weren't seeing the same old, same old. That's why I said, you yeah, ending this at school's out. Like if they invited me into that writer's room, okay, no, come on now. <laughs> but I, I say that as a fan, the, 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 you know, the friendship between yourself and Pat, um, obviously that, that had to been a strong friendship over the years because, you know, I've watched the videos of you guys, you know, going at the fan conventions and the cons and, and now working on the online auction and Degrassi tours. Obviously there's been a strong friendship over the years uh, between you both. Yeah, it's, I, I love Pasqua and um, it's, it's nice. I'm really grateful to the show for having brought us together again, like the next generation, because we actually drifted apart um, pretty much everyone on the show. There's maybe only like um, a couple of people I really uh, stayed in touch with. And the next generation, we kind of bonded all over again because like Amanda, Pat and myself and Stefan, were now the adults on the show. Right. So that was another switcheroo, right? We weren't used to that dynamic at all. No. Um, so we bonded together and I mean, it's like we picked up right where we left off, which was awesome. Um, we have, you know, so much history behind us. And uh, so now, yeah, I, I have so much fun doing these events and stuff with Pat. Um, yeah, he's, we're so, I mean, we, we get along so well. It just makes it easy. When you were, when you went to set, like if you follow Degrassi, it's almost like you get many movies in, in every episode because there's always something happening that's focused on a different character. So I assume like there would be an episode or two, you wouldn't, you'd see Caitlin, but she, but she would be in the background. Is that, is that how like they structured the show to focus on a character story per episode or sometimes two episodes just to keep it interesting. Like they're standout stars of the series, but everyone almost had like equal screen time for the yeah. majority of the series. That was super cool. It was very deliberate. Mm -hmm. um, the reasoning behind that was uh, a few reasons. There's school. They wanted to make sure that none of us missed too much school. Uh, the other reason is um, they didn't want us to have uh, a star dynamic. They didn't want it to go to our heads. And it certainly didn't. I mean, they had us doing kitchen duty. We washed our own dishes. We right. carried sandbags. I mean, there was no star status. <laughs> and we would be, we didn't get paid um, to be extras. We were extras in scenes when we weren't being used. 
a lot of us would kind of like try and hide <laughs> so that they wouldn't find us if they needed to grab a few people to like walk in the hallways or be at their lockers. You didn't want to do that. <laughs> no. well, I'm sure, I'm sure the, the paychecks back in the day compared to, you know, stand-ins now and extra roles, probably way different uh, back in the day. I was reading, uh, you know, when you were on the, you know, a bunch of you, maybe the whole cast, saying that uh, you guys wore your own clothes. There was no uh, budgets for, you know, the, you know, someone's dressing you head to toe before each episode. Is that true? Oh my gosh, we brought a lot of the the wardrobe was our own, mm -hmm. except for like the cut up socks that I would have to wear around my head sometimes, <laughs> um, or they were from thrift shops. Um, yeah. No makeup, except whatever if we wore our own. They had uh, one compact uh, to, you know if someone was shiny that we all shared and um, yeah, no, the, the budget was like minimal and uh, we um, yeah, the, the pay was certainly different. Oh, this was what I was going to say. When I started doing something, um, I started doing projects after Degrassi. Yeah. The idea of having a stand in was like, blew my mind because right. we just didn't have stand-ins and I would I would be standing there waiting for the camera guy to like get his shot ready and everything and they'd be like you know you can go relax they'd be like oh <laughs> can I <laughs> it took me a while no, you're, you're, you're not used to that you're like uh, you know uh, a, a thousand jobs here you go let's uh, throw you <laughs> all to the wolves and uh, now now there's extras to re replace the extras on today's tv shows right yeah. it's, uh, a lot, a lot different. Uh, big question that we, we, when you did the the series, you know, for, you know, obviously you were playing teenagers and you know, you know, going to school on a TV show. Was it was it different doing the school, you know, in real life and you know, trying to be a, a normal kid in school and obviously, you know, putting uh, you know, Caitlin and you know, in, in you know, different scenarios and of course Stacy in different scenarios or was it tough back then to do that? For sure. For sure. I mean, I don't even know if it was, if being on the show made a difference so much, but I can tell you in real life, I did not like school. Mm -hmm. um, I was awkward and I was always kind of like in the middle. I wasn't with the cool group. I could hang out a bit with the cool group and I was sort of with the not so cool group. I was always kind of like right in the middle and I just felt awkward all the time. And it didn't help that I would miss a lot of school and my parents were really strict. So I wasn't able to like get to know people well and go to parties. Um, and I actually ended up going to an alternative school for my last couple of years of high school, um, just because it was easier for me. And I, I, I liked working independently a lot better. That's right. And I watched, um, I know it wasn't too long ago, well, well, pre-pandemic, but you folks were in Winnipeg and you're doing a screening of Schools Out and people are just captivated on every line, especially the big you know, Tessa Capanelli scene right at the end, you know, with the slap, people are going crazy. Are, are you, it, it's, it, it was tough to, to know back then, but like now, are you still surprised how connected a lot of folks um, are still with the show and the characters, the longevity of it? I'm always surprised, but also grateful. I mean, I get it because it is like we grew up together, right? It was a big part of our childhood. And a lot of people, that was maybe the only show they were watching. Mm -hmm. um, so it's nostalgia. And we love nostalgia. It kind of reminds us of, you know, when we were younger and maybe a better time in our lives. Um, it was a better time for me on Degrassi at the Degrassi school than my real school. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, the fictional school. And, and people talk about many times like dropping the F bomb in schools. Out. Was the cast excited to get that out of their mouths when it was time to say that? Oh, they must have. I would have been. Oh, yeah. 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 yeah like, really? <laughs> <laughs> but you guys we had alternatives, we had backups. Oh, you, yeah. you guys still to this day hold the uh, hold the title for dropping the first f bomb on a Canadian TV show to this date, right? Yeah. And, uh, and of course, it involved your care. J Jamie, uh, he he knows the the famous line. Jamie, I was trying to stump him, and I think he knows all the stats of the wow. grassy. Uh, of you know, I go through forty some odd questions with him, and uh, you know, am yeah. amazing that uh, yeah, they uh, you know. But you said you had back like backup lines just in case. Yeah, alternatives. 
So okay. if, if we weren't going to be allowed to say the swear words, mm -hmm. um, it was like you were screwing Tessa Campanelli. Okay. Um, and I forget what, uh, instead of <laughs> calling Joey um, the other B word, it was you were a broom head or um, you're such a broom head. That was it. Right. You just don't have the same impact. No, no it did not. <laughs> And, yeah, very different uh, impact. I remember, you know, rewinding the VHS. What did they say? Rewind it. And then, you know, those VHS tapes didn't last. You know, you rewind them a few times. They start, <laughs> start, to, start to scratch. Yeah. Started to go all blurry in that. So I had to wait for it to go on uh, television again and, <laughs> and record it. But um, so so we jumped forward. So like you, you mentioned, like the, the cast has still been very connected. Reunions. I talked about like the screening in Winnipeg. I believe you went to different cities, but uh, a lot still going on right now. Even tomorrow, there's something very awesome going on with the Degrassi online auction. Yes, yes. Thanks for bringing that up. So we haven't been able to do a lot of the conventions or comic cons, unfortunately, because of COVID. But um, we are getting to engage with fans and share stuff that Pat and I have collected over like well for me since kids of Degrassi Street there's a lot of stuff that we've just been holding on to that what am I going to do with it anymore and there's a lot of fans that really get a kick out of that kind of stuff so we have stuff that we are going to auction off tomorrow uh at 7 p.m eastern standard time on the Degrassi tour Facebook page uh it'll be live and if you miss out on stuff during the live auction, I think uh, Pat's going to also put stuff online um, on the Saturday and Sunday as yeah. well. So for whatever doesn't doesn't go. Yeah. And, and, and find the yeah. link on Facebook because I believe it's Patty put a video together, just some of the stuff that's going to be up for auction. And if you're a Degrassi fan, to me, it doesn't matter what version of Degrassi. Like, obviously, this is the best one, but all the Grassley's <laughs> fans are good. Um, but they, they have some pretty awesome, yeah. awesome things tomorrow that you're going to be able to bid online. And, and yourself and Pat are going to be hosting? Yes, yes. So we'll be hosting. We take turns. Pat has a bunch of stuff. We both have, like, a lot of scripts, um, some books, and just, like, a lot of um, mementos that we've collected. And, yeah, we'll take turns. Uh talking in front of the camera while people chat it's it's it goes so fast it's it's quite exciting i only i did one once with pat um uh about six months ago and it's really exhilarating <laughs> it's it's good fun yeah there are and once again that just speaks to the fan base and the new generation my my partner she she's 20 so i'm 46 and she's 28 so she was never you know she missed the grassy so i've been watching it at night we're watching it in the room she's like what is this it seems old i'm like just watch so she's like well put on something like riverdale she tells you i'm like no that's not <laughs> high school like no one, no one looked like archie so she's so we watch a couple episodes and i believe it's when michelle and blt are breaking up and then i'm saying with well, time late and then no time to turn it off no i want to see what happens now what so i mean it does yeah, connect huh? because a lot of these things happen in high school you know drug abuse and yeah. then you start worrying about you know sex and peer pressure and uh whether you like it at home like a million things that just people go through today yeah even even the interracial dating like we actually got hate mail for that episode i mean yeah. it's just i don't know it boggles my mind but yeah yeah. They, weren't, they weren't afraid to go there. So once you can get past the, the cheese factor of like, mm -hmm. and the bad quality, <laughs> yeah. then it actually my, you my, has substance. My, my favorite, well, two things are my favorite things about the grassy high. Like you hear that bell like a zillion times. You must have like fell asleep at night hearing oh. that bell in your head. Eh? And then even like the, the, they have the Degrassi theme song, but then they have the instrumental at the end, which is very like, upbeat and feel good but sometimes the issue would end on a serious issue like you know i'm sorry i got cancer then the credits roll doo, 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 doo. <laughs> like, they keep you like, going into into the next episode <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. always always the cliffhangers uh, you know yeah. like, just amazing when uh when, like, when, when you sit back and watch old episodes of yourself do you watch it and do you, do you criticize yourself and the, the way you acted back in the day? Can you actually sit through an episode like a normal fan can? Um, I try not to watch them. <laughs> Just, yeah, I'm very critical. Mm -hmm. I actually did start watching some of 
kids to Degrassi Street with my kids just to see if they'd be interested. Um, except like the quality is so bad that right. <laughs> I think one of them started glitching. So I, I, I don't even have a good copy of some of my stuff. So, um, but yeah, I mean, I can, I can watch like the little kid stuff now, but it's been a while. I don't know. I'll, I'll have to get back to you on that. <laughs> Yeah, I, I think it's different since obviously you were so involved in the series than someone like us who can rewatch it because we're fans. But you're involved in the production. You're there day in, day out. Um, it's it, To me, it'd be a little bit different. But still, at night, if I'm you, I, I'd be going to bed going, I'm Caitlin F. and Ryan. Like, I, <laughs> I think I'd be saying that, you know, Canadian icon, Kinsman, right? That's right. Yeah, Canadian icon. Yeah, you, you can't beat. The first, uh, you know, I think other TV shows down the road, like Saved by the Bell, you know, I'm sure the producers, you know, there's only so many producers out there that probably, uh, you know, if you tell them, hey, did you ever watch Degrassi? I'm pretty sure they would point themselves to, uh, you know, that show, that little old show in Toronto, uh, you know, expanded uh, across the universe. And I think people took ideas and, you know, kind of, and it resonated into other shows. I'm just saying, you know, well, uh, 90210 got their idea from, from our show. But, and you have to remember though, too, like at the time when we were shooting it, it wasn't cool. <laughs> like I was not cool at my school. Like people actually kind of made fun of us until the show caught on. It was a few years later, I think, that oh, it started right. doing really well. And it was showing in like so many different countries. But in Canada, it's like we weren't really treated specially or anything. So, yeah. And, and now look at you, right? You, you, you finally showed them all up <laughs> after, after all these years, you know? You can finally say, I told you so. Yeah, yeah. I, right. I, yeah. You, you oh, guys probably knew the show was going to, you know, be a huge hit, but uh, you, you probably didn't realize it was going to be that big of a hit back when, uh, you know, back when you were shooting the episode. No, not, not a clue. <laughs> no, 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 no. I think at that age, it's just a, a, an awesome job, right? Yeah. You hang out with some cool people and uh, who knows where it's going to take. But, you know, obviously after Degrassi, you've been really busy and you've started a new fitness company. Now, I watched your introductory video. You, you make it fun. So someone like Mark and I who yeah, don't do a lot of working out, this is perfect for us up to like someone who's, fitness is their life correct absolutely i mean i don't want to just do boring workout videos um i want to be relatable i'm a mom i have two kids i need energy to keep up with them um i have been working out for a long time but i want to make it accessible to i realize especially i started putting the free workups up uh in, during covid when all the gyms closed and I had just gotten recertified as a fitness trainer. I mean, I used to work in LA years ago. Um, and then I started up to, to work here. And then of course COVID hit and it's like, oh, but I wanted people to have that outlet um, because they needed it more than ever. Um, but it's got to not be intimidating. It's gotta be fun. Mm -hmm. And so I offer modifications in, in every program that I do. And I have the beginner program that is specifically for people that are just starting out. And I'm feverishly working away on my intermediate program that will be launching hopefully in October for people that are more experienced and uh, ready to go a bit harder. <laughs> That's an exciting challenge because, you know, you watch guys like uh, Tony Horton from the, the, the P90X and Sean T. And I always wonder, they put these great uh, video exercise programs together. How many takes does it take to get the right, like say the beginner's one, like Mark and I have no clue and you're teaching us how to stretch and, you know, how to do maybe some of the modified moves. This must take a while to make sure it's right for the, all types of audiences. Absolutely. Um it's funny, when I first started, it was actually a friend of mine who who convinced me to start, you know, doing the YouTube videos and everything like that. And um, we would, I would do the entire workout and we would barely stop every now and then we might like take stop to, to redo something for timing. But I would be doing the workouts like in real time. And now when I'm doing them, because we're offering progressions for the program, you have to do like one move and then you have to do like four, four to six different variations of the same move. And I, I try to shoot them back to back and I'm dying. I'm like killing myself trying to do these workouts. <laughs> <I'm kidding. laughs> 
right. so it takes a while. So, so, so we have your your web page uh, scrolling across the bottom. Is that the first place someone should go if they're interested and see what you can offer? I know there's a lot of people out there that says, listen, I want to start working out, but I'm a little bit nervous to go to a gym and I don't know what I'm doing. And it's going to be embarrassing. To me, this is, a, this is an awesome place to go because you can do it at your home. Absolutely. I mean, I get overwhelmed. I mean, I, I've worked in gyms. But still, if I'm not familiar with the gym or there are just days where you just it's a lot easier to just convince yourself to work out when you know that you can stay in the comfort of your own home. You don't have to worry about being around other people. Um, so, yeah, my, my website would be the first place to go. It's got my coaching page because I do virtual coaching as well um, through an app. So I have clients that have different goals and I prescribe programs uh customized for them and then uh yeah there's also a page for it, uh, where you can sign up for the program as well yeah pretty up pretty, pretty. do you miss acting? is acting your first passion in life for like for professional work uh not anymore no not anymore <laughs> well maybe it never was i don't know because i fell mm. into it at such a young age mm. i love acting um is it my first love? No, I don't think so. I really, I think to me, uh, the fitness and health, um, it took me a long time to really figure out what made me happy and what I enjoy doing. And, and this is it. So don't people, don't be afraid if it takes you till you're almost 50 years old to figure it out. To figure it out. And, and take the leap, right? You need to take the leap yeah. and uh, you, you never want to go down the path in life and say, you know what, maybe I should have, maybe I should have done that, right? Uh, you know, life is short. You know, if you've got a, a good idea, try it. Uh, you know, what's the worst you're going to do? You're going to fall down and you just dust yourself off and yeah. pick up and try it again, right? And, and don't compare yourself to other people. Because it's too easy to talk yourself out of something if you're going to be like, oh, but look at this person, look at that person. Just do it for yourself first, yeah. and obviously for the people that you're trying to help, and and just go for it, yeah. I, and, and I encourage people Luna, to check out your webpage because there's there's a blog and testimonials about yourself, like where you were and where you are now and how you got there. And there's a lot of motivational type pieces. It's just not all this is how you do this stretch or this is how you do this workout. It's all about whole body healthness, you know, yes, eating yes. well and, 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 and your men, and, you know, working towards your mental health and being physically active. It's a whole 360 degree version, right? Kinsman, you guys 360, not like us, j just one. We're only one, one degree. We need to be 360. That's right. Right. Three, 360 <laughs> degrees. Yeah. But, so, but yes, the ment the mental aspect is a huge, huge part of it. They go hand in hand. Rip. And, and I find too, like, especially in the last couple of years or well, two years now, obviously in this pandemic, you know, mental health has become uh, a real difficulty for, you know, a lot of individuals, you know, with the isolation or loss of job or relationship issues, um, children in and out of school, businesses opening and closing and, and, you know, to, you need that balance in life. You, you need the balance of your mental health, your physical health. And I always find you just need time to wind down and go, a few minutes for myself. Um, it, and that's what it is, right? It's making time for yourself, whether it's working out, meditating, and just having that you time. Um, but working out is important because you, especially when people are so sedentary and they're at their computers for such a long portion of the day, you really want to make sure your body's moving around. And that is what's going to also help you feel better when you get that blood circulating. Yeah, that's right. And, and, and from slowing. And Joanne's, and Joanne's saying, you know, add that onto that, maybe you lost a parent or someone very close to you. So it does add up. And I, and I always find the, uh, you know, working out is one of, it's, it's a great stress reliever. And that's how it started for me. Absolutely. And of course, I had my own from being on the show. I had my struggles with um, body image. And that's kind of where it all stemmed from. I had a very unhealthy outlook on life. Um, I abused myself physically and mentally. So this has all come over years. Um, I have learned how to um, turn it into something healthier for myself so that hopefully I can help other people um, do the same. 
So yeah, it's not just like I decided one day, oh, I'm going to be a fitness trainer. It, it kind of, it was a natural progression from uh, things that I was going through growing up. Yeah, that's awesome. Okay. So, you know, I, I could sit here and talk with Stacy for like four weeks, Kinsman, but obviously yeah, she, yeah, you she, she has a life in the business. That, uh, you know, ver verbal diarrhea in the, the comment <laughs> section. J Jamie's going to faint. Uh, yeah, thank yeah. goodness well, he hasn't fainted yet. But uh, as you no. can tell, Stacy, he, he's, he is a humongous fan of the grass. And again, uh, he even says he's going to be a part of that, uh, the Facebook auction oh, tomorrow course. night yeah. at seven o'clock. What uh, what items would you have? Do you think that uh, the would wow the socks off, Jamie? What, uh, what uh, pick an item that you think Jamie would be bidding on? Uh, you know, I, I, I you know you might even like some of the um, there's uh, some of the original opening artwork from the the montage, the Degrassi High montage that my dad actually had put together. So I have his original artwork, and I've made. Um, Pat put some collages of all his stuff together and I've got one framed in my office. You can't see it right now. And Pat has one and we're, we're auctioning some of those packages off um, tomorrow as well. So you can make your own montage, there's scripts. Yeah, uh, I, 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 I kind of forget even what all is there, but those would, I don't know. That's what sticks out in my mind, but um, yeah, that's right. Watch Pat's video again and see. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Pat, Pat's video, yeah, he, 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 he has, he has a, a, a huge, they have a huge collection. They say that's just the beginning, but we will post the link to the, um, to the auction Facebook page. But to me, if you go, if you look up the grassy tour on Facebook, uh, that will give you all the awesome stuff we're doing. But before we, before we let Stacy go, I, I want to do a, a little bit of a skit with you, if you don't mind. Hmm. Okay. Yes. Sure. Let me. So so. Let's say like it's 1991, and you're Caitlin, and I'm going to be a new student at Degrassi, and we'll see if I fit into Degrassi or not, Kinsman. You can be the judge or not. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, we'll let our viewers be, uh, you know, uh, the, the judge of this. I do have my That's old cool. high school football jacket. You're pretend you're, you're audition. You're auditioning to play yeah. a role. I don't know if I I would make the cut. So. uh well, look at it on the green screen. That doesn't, that's not a good start. No, 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 that's, that's <laughs> look not like good. the matrix. <laughs> so uh, I guess, so, hey, 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 Caitlin, my name is um, Johnny Wigglesworth. They, they call me the Wiggle Man. Now, I, I have a question for you. First of all, look at my awesome matrix jacket. And, and you've been hanging around with this Jeremiah guy, but I, I much, I got the better hat. And I'm I'm a lot hipper. So do you think you're gonna go with the wiggle man to the under the sun ball dance this Friday? Is this gonna be a yes or no? I think we're better as just friends. I knew it, Kinsman. I I'm gonna ask Tessa. <laughs> Darn you! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know if I'd I get chewed up at the grassy there, Kinsman, but uh that was pretty. Yeah. Well, th th thank you so much, Stacy. It's been like we say a tremendous honor. Um, obviously, the love for the show is very obvious on here. And uh, we're following along with everything you've been up to now. I mean, Kinsmen are going to get into some workouts, right, Mark? Our That's new right, year's workout workouts. has to start in October now. We're, we're really doing late some here. arm curls. Yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We're, we're, we're going to be, uh, you know, as they say, the dad bods come out in the summer. It's yeah. uh, yeah, you, you gotta you gotta make sure they don't get padded on during the winter off season, right? So yeah, yeah. Gotta, gotta gotta stay active and, de gotta and keep definitely. That energy up. Yeah, that's yeah. right. That energy up. <laughs> well, thank you, thank you guys so much for the yeah. love and support and for having me on. You guys are awesome. I love everything that you guys do and what you're about. So so thank you. Yeah, that's great. So thank you once again, Stacy. And uh, like I said, we'll. Uh, We'll, we'll be bidding tomorrow night, Kinsman, you and I. So break out, don't be cheap. Break out that wallet. Well, that's it. You know what? Maybe I'll use the show credit card. I'll use Clomp's card to, uh, yeah. to get you something nice. Just think, scripts that were originally touched by, yes, Caitlin Ryan, Jamie. Yeah, you're, uh, okay. he's, gonna, he's, he's gonna spend a ton of money, and of course, it's uh, it's all for a good cause. So, yeah. you know, and we autograph everything. Well, there you go. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> Yeah, I, I I guarantee he's going to get a piece of that memorabilia, and we're going to showcase it on our show of him. Uh, you know, he, uh, he's gonna he's gonna turn into that uh, that screaming fan again. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I will. I will be bragging, of course. Right. There's no shame in that. No shame. No, no shame. Right. <laughs> yeah, 
So thank, awesome. Thank you so much, Stacy. We really appreciate your time. Thank you, guys. Okay, okay. bye. Good luck tomorrow night. Thank you. Okay, bye-bye. Bye. Wasn't that awesome, Kinsman? She Wasn't is like uh, she su such a treat. I don't think you watched enough Degrassi in your life, Kinsman, because this is I, 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 I watched it. I no, watched you it. Did it. Because this is yes, why I have to be your, your life coach, because I learned from the guys at Degrassi, learned from the girls at Degrassi how to handle situations, and that's why I developed into such a mature man. That's right. <laughs> you think so? You're, you're, you're picking you're picking up Joey Jeremiah's haircut now. I, I think he's, <laughs> yeah, got that. he's got the he's got the bald the, the bald look yeah. going on just like you do. Yeah. Do, do, do you think the Wiggle Man would have did anything uh, good there in the halls at Degrassi? He would have got. I don't think the bullies. Wiggle Man. You would have been stuffed into the locker. At the yeah, Wiggle yeah. Man. There was a few bullies in that show, and you know, like when they were Niners, like the first season of Degrassi High, I, I would have been stuffed in a locker, had the nine painted on my head. I don't, I don't think the Wiggle Man would have been getting any girls to the dance. It, it's it, true to life, like Jamie Clump. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, uh, so. Such a treat. And again, uh, the Degrassi memorabilia live online Facebook auction. You can join Stacy, Caitlin Ryan, and uh, Joey Jeremiah. I still call them that. Uh, it's hard to call them in their real names, right? Like uh, he, he must be called Joey Jeremiah all the time, right? He, he and uh, Caitlin going to be on uh, tomorrow night doing the uh, the auction. And again, scripts. I, I, J Jamie, you're, you're, you're going to be uh, glued to the tube there. And uh, that stream starting there, tomorrow night at seven. There, there's nothing wrong with being a, a, a fan of uh, of this show, Kinsman. Anyways, um, so Jamie didn't faint. So let's let's chat about a couple of other things uh, right now. There. So we have the Back to the '90s party happening at the Surge. Yes, we do. Saturday night. So so you and I were there, and I would say because there there is limited capacity because of the restrictions and the table distancing. So it can't be like, if you went to the surge pre COVID, it's going to be different post COVID because Where everybody can, you know, pack the place and still, <laughs> you know, sit at tables and hang around tables. It's set up. There's a seating plan. Like a, I, I shouldn't say a seating plan, but the, the tables are all, you know, laid out, you know, they've got their, their COVID pattern in place. So if you uh, haven't got a ticket yet, pick them up. Uh, we were there today, you know, uh, tables of seven, sixes, and five, fours have been bought. Uh, there is uh, the upstairs, you know, uh, we call that the VIP at the Surge. Uh, you, you can fill some space up there. And again, uh, you don't want to miss this. You know, uh, Midnight Express, Luke Shalafu is going to have his video screens out there. Back, uh, back to the 90s. Kids and again, man, that, the door prize. Four tickets to yeah. Rock on the River reconnect for someone. Someone is going to walk away with uh, four, four, four tickets. Well, Amazing! You, you got to hype up the ev uh, event, my friend. You're making it sound like a, a, a monologue. It's going to be an awesome night. It is. You know, you're going to be able to request all your '90s hits. They're going to go on the big screen. Yeah. We're going to have a red carpet with a back to the '90s backdrop. If you come dressed like the '90s, take your picture. If you get dressed up as maybe you want to come as, uh, I don't know, like the Backstreet Boys or, okay. you know, or you want to come up as uh, Britney Spears. Get dressed up as a 90s, 90s clothes or 90s character. We're going to give away prizes for that. That's We're going right. to have trivia. The music's going to be blaring. Um, it, the, the whole bar is going to be decked out in 90s retro. And uh, I heard, you know, I heard from Sherry Jonas uh, over at, uh, you know, Gold Dust. Um, you know, planning and decorating. They, she's got some awesome ideas. This place is going to look awesome. So there's only a certain amount of tickets. That's right. So, so go uh, contact Kim uh, Donovan and her staff. Ten bucks hits you in, and uh, keep in mind that your ten dollars could be worth a weekend at Rock on the River Reconnect, Hollinger Park, October first and second. Uh, <laughs> that is one one incentive to go. And uh, again, I've uh, been putting together some of the prize list. For uh, you know the, the 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 best dressed couple and you know the best dressed group, great prizes from some local sponsors, which we'll uh, we'll acknowledge when we uh, get the prize lists uh, ready to go. It's gonna be fun. Yeah, it's about so, yeah. So, anyways, that is going to be a rocking night. Um, um, tomorrow at two o'clock, we're going to draw two tickets for Rock in the River. Um, yes. Reconnect for people who completed the sort of scavenger hunt. So on our page, if you complete 
one scavenger hunt item, you're in the you get one ballot. If you completed all six, you get six ballots and so six on. Six ballots, yeah. So tomorrow at two o'clock, we're gonna draw live someone to win two general mission tickets. Now, VIP sold out for Friday, VIP sold out for Saturday. There's only a limited amount of tickets left for Friday and Saturday general mission, and these are eighty dollar tickets. Eighty bucks. Uh, so there's this thing's gonna be sold out. And you and I have 16 to give away, and two of the 16 will be at two o'clock tomorrow live so you still have time do the scavenger hunt everything can be uh, verified with a photo you just send us to our facebook page yeah. and uh, we're, we're going to draw draw a winner give away two tickets kids we, that's we, right we uh, cut, cutting cutting ballots uh you know in, in our spare time i've got more ballots to cut and put into the, the the box make sure that all ballots do get in there so yeah six uh six of the challenges just show us proof you know, uh, one of them go in front of one of our Kids and Clomp Live sponsors. There you go. Uh, not 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 giving too much away, but look at the bottom of our banner. You know, uh, the Urban Farm has canine protection detection services, Casada Burritos and Tacos, The Surge, Timmins RV, Imagine Cinema 6, about uh, the Mountjoy Farmer's Market. Uh, any one of those sponsors will do. So if you go in front, just do a selfie and send it into us. And uh, there's your proof. That's one. Those are, that's, uh, that's one ballot. Yeah. Or uh, for tomorrow's draw, and again, yeah, right. you, you've yeah. got to one one fifty nine fifty nine tomorrow yeah. afternoon to uh, get them in. Kinsman will be right up to the uh, counting the seconds. You, if anyone get, gets in one a second late, I'll allow it. Kinsman's a little tight with that. I'll I'll say Kinsman, you're gonna let this one slide, right? Yeah, so. yeah. Or you're gonna have to to get a coffee. Now, uh, you are back with the Timmins Rock tomorrow, aren't you? Uh, yes, I am. You know what? Uh, it's exciting. Uh, the Timmins Rock, for the first time in this pandemic, are playing in front of fans for the first time since March 10th of 2020. So tomorrow, the Timmins Rock will be taking on the Kirkland Lake Gold Miners for their season slash home opener. And tickets available right now online. Keep in mind, we do, uh, due to COVID, uh, they can only go about half capacity, which is, uh, I do believe, 750 in the stands, get your tickets at TimminsRock.com, and we will see you there tomorrow night. Yes, PA uh, announcer, uh, the first time doing it in front of fans in uh, in over a year's time. And uh, if you follow our uh, Facebook page, Kids and Clomp Live, I'll uh, post period updates and all sorts of fun from the rink. Keep yeah, you up to date on uh, who's going to win. And uh, let's uh, I'm going to go out on a limb and say that uh, Timmins Rock, all openers are always important for uh, at any team, but for our junior A team, they're gonna they're gonna kick a KL tomorrow night. You uh, you mark my word; it's gonna be a, a four four two win for the Timmins Rock. That's my prediction. All right, pal. Yeah, I know they're looking forward to it. There's only one voice for the Timmins Rock, and it, it, it it's you, Kinsman. You do a good job. Now, another question. Yes, this is the banner from last time, so I don't know if you updated it. So, smile cookies. We've been eating a lot. A lot. You're saying it's four to two now. No, I that, 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 that should be updated. Actually, my four. I, I didn't have one yesterday, so yeah, my mine's still at four. How many have you had? I've had three. So okay, so uh, let's three. let's update yours to a three. But yeah, need more smile cookies. Of course, uh, only one week to raise money for the Dare program, so uh, I, I need to eat double tomorrow and help out uh, Rick Lemieux and uh, his D.A.R.E. It's nice to see him back with the D.A.R.E. program, teaching it online, not doing it with TPS or in the schools uh, like it has been. But uh, nice to see that Rick Lemieux is back doing what he does best. And, uh, yeah, yeah. He's, people always awesome. say the cookie should have Rick Lemieux's face on it. Right? The uh, he, he's, the, he's the face of D.A.R.E. here in this city. Oh, and uh, Lori uh, has a good comment because the, the, the Terry Fox virtual run it's is coming Sunday. this Sunday. And I, I know uh, on Lori's personal Facebook page that uh, she's very involved with that. And that's a very important run across Canada, it uh, is. raising money for cancer. And, uh, you know, the Terry Fox run is huge. Do you know, and from Thunder Bay, that's where Terry Fox ended his journey. So we have the Terry Fox yeah. Memorial in Thunder Bay. Terry Fox Memorial back in your home city. It's uh, the, the no, all, I, I do believe it's the number one monument visited in, uh, in all of Canada. There it is. You're starting to know because you hung around some of the Thunder Bay golfers and coaches today. <laughs> you're, you're starting to become at, at the next gen. Yeah, the next gen, uh, the Fall East, uh, the East Championships, Fall Series East Championships uh, happening at the Hollander Golf Club. 
Uh, yeah, we had uh, some fun there at Hollinger today. The players all getting uh, adjusted and uh, customized to the course. Again, some of the, you know, talking to the parents, you know, they said, you know, no, no, no offense to uh, little old Timmons, but uh, when they said, okay, where is Timmins? They, they find it on the map. You know, for the ones coming from Thunder Bay, nine hour drive. Okay. We're, we're, we're going to be showing up to a cow pasture playing golf. Okay. That's, that's the assumption. Now look at them. They're playing the Hollinger, which is, you know, the, the comment from the parents today going, I can't believe my kids are playing golf yeah, on yeah, a course you, like this. And right. You and I, you and I no. will uh, be there uh, all weekend. We're going to go there. Yeah. So it's so all weekend and Sunday. We're actually doing our, did you know we're doing our show from the Hollinger golf club on Sunday? We're going to be doing our show seven o'clock from the tent at the Hollinger golf club. And yeah, they're uh, going to be doing the, uh, the award ceremony in and around six thirty, seven o'clock. So in and around our show, We'll, uh, we'll have all the, the ambient noise in the background of uh, the juniors, who's going to win the, the top uh, ladies' side and uh, the top for uh, the male side. It's going uh, yeah. to be great. Yeah, And uh, we have tickets to give away, by the way, for the yeah, entire yeah. weekend. Well, look at this. Just just as you said that, I am ready to do the, the draw for the three tickets. Okay. So, pardon me, for the three prizes. So, we have two movie passes. Yeah. We have farm to fork bucks. How many of those are we giving away? Uh, we're giving away $30 in farm to fork bucks. And again, that's courtesy of Rock We Sell from the Mountjoy Farmer's Market. And again, you can use them not only at the farmer's market, but when the downtown uh, BIA puts on the urban park, you can uh, spend them down there as well. So $30. And again, it is like cash. If you uh, spent, uh, you know, five bucks of that, you know, the rest is uh, in your pocket. But again, you can use it for some goods that way. Of course, imagine Cinema 6 tickets we're giving away, movies, we've got uh, food tickets, and we've got golf passes. All right, so let's let's do the uh, farm to fork bucks first. Are you ready? All, right. All you had to do is comment on the show. On tonight's show. All right. Are you ready, pal? These are for the farm to fork bucks. That's right. This is uh, for the farmer's markets. So who, who, who's going to win? Well, it, the machine is about to tell you here in a, in a few seconds. Go Chris Gardner. Chris Gardner. He's actually he he's he he's, he's one of the he's the coach. He's one of the coaches for the the Thunder Bay Boys at uh, at the the Hollander. We met him today. Look at that. Chris uh, Chris Gardner is in. So you know, I I don't know if he's got time before his round on Saturday with his boys, but uh, he can check out the farmers market, the Mountjoy Farmers Market. Yeah. Chris will uh, will hook you up. 30 bucks you can go buy some uh you know you know uh, he needs to keep the, the boys uh, hydrated on the course you know they always eat fruit uh, in golf you can definitely fill up at uh, the farmer's market so there we go yeah. we'll get in touch with you chris all right kinsman so you got that down then let's number yeah. two let's give away the two movie passes for imagine cinema six are are, are you ready for that one let's do it all right pal here we go Do, 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 do. We, we can't play the Jeopardy theme, Kinsman, because that's copyrighted. It's copyrighted. Uh, they're dead. Deb Baudet. Deb Baudet is the winner of the two movie passes. All right. Congratulations, Deb. You're going to Imagine Cinema 6. We'll get in touch with you. We'll get your details and then pass them off to Gina Faka and uh, Colin over at uh, the cinema. So maybe off to the, uh, off to the movies. Into awesome. their luxury recliners, and uh, last but not least, we have we're, we're we're giving away six tickets for the weekend. So a golf diehard who wants to go and uh, you know watch the juniors play down at the Hollinger for the next gen. What do you say we uh, we give away all six? They can go. Uh, there's two passes for tomorrow's round one, two passes for round two on Saturday, and two passes for the final round. So uh, we're going to save you a, a few bucks here. All right, Kinsman. Here we go. So these are for the golf passes. So you get to go Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. It's pretty awesome down there. So we have a giant grandstand behind 18, so you can sit and watch uh, the players come in on 18. You can walk the course. And there's Mike, Mike Cook. Cook. All right. There you go. You got that name there, Kinsman? We'll, uh, we'll, we'll reach out to Mike. Mike, uh, you know, maybe he can use all six. Obviously, there's uh, two passes for each day. You can take a friend. You can take, uh, you know, 
someone who's, uh, you know, wanting to watch some great juniors play. We were watching a few of them come down nine today and, you know, you or I, we go out and play where, uh, you know, we're, 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 we're not, uh, you know, marking out the paces on the green, you know, marking arrows on our scorecard. The, the, these kids are diehard, uh, you know, they've got their eyes set on, you know, this as a career, you know, looking at the scholarships. Again, if you're looking for some good golf, that's uh, definitely going to be in Mike's future this weekend. And if you weren't as lucky to win like Mike, uh, $5 per ticket at uh, the Hollinger for each round. So, uh, again, they had their practice round today, round one tomorrow, round two Saturday, the final round on Sunday. We'll be down at the Hollander doing our live show, Jamie and I, Kins and Klopp Live, and uh, hopefully we'll uh, we'll have all the hoopla of who wins what during the show. It's going to be exciting. All the, ho- all the hoopla. <laughs> all the hoopla. I don't know if people say that, kids. But sure hoopla. they do. No one no one says hoopla. They don't they, say They didn't even say that back in Degrassi. In, <laughs> in, 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 in the, and that's the 80s and early 90s. My that's it, right? there. <laughs> All right, pal. So I think, uh, hold on. Hold, hold on a second. What's that? Should I bring the? Are you are you finally going to respect the Wiggle Man or what? <laughs> are you trying to be G- uh, uh, Joey Jeremiah again? No, I'm the Wiggle Man. <laughs> I, I, I'm my own version. Clump, no, clump, no, 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 no. K, K, Caitlin's going back for Joey. <laughs> it, it, you you, you never thing. have a chance as the Wiggle Man. No, that's right. The Wiggle Man. I, I got the moves, kids. What do you think <laughs> or what? What do you give me? Out of ten. How cool ten, I'll, I'll, I'll be I'll be played and uh, give you a three. You always let me down. 